this section is going to be like Wednesday's homework? No, we're, we're still going um, on stuff for today. Yeah, I'll let you know at the end of the time. I'll let you know at the end of our time. I'll say, all right, we got through da-da-da, and it's all due by tomorrow. Oh, okay. Yeah, but for sure we'll get through 1-6. Yeah, probably probably just this section. How so many sections is it usually like three? Or yeah, three or two, and you can tell by the calendar what we're supposed to get through. So we're supposed to get through today one 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 five one six. So it should be three sections, and those will be due tomorrow. So we're on to our one point six. But I think we're going to need to go even a little further because I forgot about that Monday Memorial Day holiday thing. So we're going to need to add a little. So I'm going to keep going beyond one six today a little ways anyway. We probably won't get all one seven, but a little bit more. We want to check our grades in the future. Would it be through Canvas or is it through this? Yeah, no, everything's through this. It's under results. Yeah, right after the first exam, I'll show you. So this Friday, we'll take our exam Thursday. I'll get it back for you Friday. And then I'll say, all right, let's go on. Let me show you. Click on results, and there's where your grades are, and it'll calculate it and everything. I'll show you. Um, I yeah, I guess so. Is it locked? Yeah, those are the good instructions. Um, it was the second half of the purpose. So anybody that's got a purpose, give them the knowledge. Oh, okay, thank you. That one has the instructions. <laughs> Thanks, Ed. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, if you guys prefer. Okay, Zach. <coughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, feel free to grab me after. All I know is that Ag Coach, you can go in person if you want. Yeah. Over to the, to the place, see if those instructions help. Do you have the extra... Um, Oh, the syllabus? Yeah. Yes. Did some other people not get the syllabus? Anybody else needs the syllabus? Thank you. Have we got one? All right. Yeah, that has the Math Excel thing on page three there. Yeah, which we need to get on the Math Excel, use the course ID and everything. All right. Good deal. So um, let's take a look here. So now we're in section 1.6, addition of integers. So 3 plus negative 5. So, uh, negative 15. Negative. 3 plus negative 15. So, yeah, are you good with the positives and the negatives and all that? How does all that work? Well, what I'm going to say is what I think the easiest thing to do is just to think about um, gains and losses. Gains, because remember, math is made up to describe things that are real. So real life, gains and losses is the easy way to think about it. So how about like if you positive, this is a, this is a positive three. How do I know? signs are off to the left. They're in front of the number, right? So what's in front of that 3? Nothing, which means it's positive 3, huh? And what's in front of that 15? Negative. Negative, so that's a loss. So it's a gain of 3 and a loss of 15. Good so far. I just want to be clear on what, what those even mean, like in the real world. So think about money. What if you did some kind of money thing and you gained $3 and then later you lost Fifteen dollars. What's the net result to your bank account? To gain three, you go up by three and then down by fifteen. Where are you at when all is said and done? You're down twelve bucks, aren't you? Right. You can see that on the number line if it's helpful. Whatever you'd like to, you can use calculator also. So if you're at here's zero just for reference. So if you're at gain three, one, two, three, you're at positive three, right? And then you fall back. Uh, then you lose 15, so you go back 1, 2, 3, and then 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, so uh, oh, 13, 14, 15. So you go all the way back to negative 12, all the way back, right? So you, what, you gained 3, and then you went back 15, so that brought you all the way back to negative 12. So negative 12 is the answer to this problem. Or you think about... Football, it's not football season, but that's an easy way. Gain, the running back gains three yards, and then he loses uh, 15 yards. Where are they at overall? They're back 12, right? So gains and losses. Money or football or whatever else in real life you want to think about for gains and losses. Good on that? All right, so... So there's that one. So 17. Plus now... Is that multiplication? It's not, huh? No. Now, it's got parentheses. Some people say it's not true. 
the parentheses always mean multiply, but that's not quite true, is it? They don't always mean multiply. They often do. Why don't, why don't the parentheses mean multiply in this case? Because it's divided by plus. Well, it's not divided. That's a plus sign. It's an, oh, oh, separated by. You mean separated. like separated. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, it's another word for separated. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, because that plus sign, huh? If, if the 17 was right up against the negative 7, then that would mean multiply, huh? So when do parentheses mean multiply? When you're right up against them and there's no separator in there. Yeah, it's totally it. So the plus sign means it's not multiplication, it's adding, subtracting. So it's just gains and losses, huh? Real life. Plus and minus represent real life gains and losses. So the running back gains 17 yards and then he, then he has a, whoops, 7. He gains 17 and then he loses 7. Or you gain $17 in your bank account and then you lose 7. Where's the net result? Where are you at? You're on regular positive normal 10. It's just subtraction in the end, 17 minus 7, isn't it? Good? On the gains and losses and all that stuff? Okay. So negative 18 plus 16. Try that one. Same thing. Think about gains and losses. Answer is minus two, right? We go with that because if you lose eighteen dollars and then you gain back sixteen, you're at negative two overall. Negative two. Good. All right. So gains and loss. All right. So negative eight plus parenthesis negative three. Try that one. Think about gains and losses. All right, so if you have a, a loss of 8 and a loss of 3, right? Because they're both negative. They're both losses. So if you lose $8 and then you lose $3, where are you at in your bank account? You're $11 down. Huh? You just actually add those numbers. Huh? A loss and a loss makes a bigger loss. Doesn't it? Now, sometimes people say, hey, two negatives make a positive. I thought there was a rule that two negatives make a positive. So should that be positive 11? That's multiplying. Must multiplying. Yeah. Two negatives make a positive when they're times, not when they're added and subtracted. Yeah. So when you're doing math, you want to, here's just the very tip of the iceberg. We'll have a whole iceberg underneath the surface here of rules that we'll see throughout these four weeks that there's one set of rules when you're adding, subtracting things, could be numbers, could be letters, could be whatever. There's always one set of rules for adding, subtracting, and a different set of rules for multiplying, dividing. You gotta keep those separate. When those confuse, that's when all things, everything goes bad. So always keep in, keep in your mind, okay, these are the rules for adding, subtracting, and these are the rules for multiplying, dividing. So the two, wrong, two negatives make a positive, that's a multiplying rule. Adding, subtracting, you don't say two negatives make a positive. You just think about gains and losses, and you'll know what to do. Is it uh, simpler to remove the plus sign and just have it, and remove the brackets and just leave it minus 8, minus eight. That's totally fine if that helps you. You don't have to, but you're right. That's the same thing. Either way is good. It really means that. Does that apply to any situation or any... Uh, Anytime up. Anytime a plus is right up against the negative, yeah, you can just drop those and it'll just be minus. That's always going to be true. Yeah, that's right. But you don't have to. You can just totally look at it here and go, look, it's a loss and a loss. It's a big old loss. Add them up. That's true. So when do two negatives make a positive? When they're multiplied. And this is not multiplication. Even though there's parentheses, this is adding, subtracting because of the plus sign in the middle. Huh? All right. Good. All right, negative 44 plus 26. So again, adding, subtracting, go ahead and give it a try. Okay, so it's a loss 
of 44 and a gain of 26, right? Loss of 44 and gain of 26. So really, is the answer going to end up negative or positive in the end? Negative. Yeah, because there's more loss than gain, right? If, you, if the running back lose for, lost 44 yards and then gained back 26, they're still in negative territory, aren't they? Or if your bank account loses $44 and gains back $26, you are still losing. So it's negative something. Now, how do I find out what that negative answer is? You really need to subtract them. You've got to find the difference between them, right? So you could put the... Even though the 44 is the negative one, you could put him on the top and subtract, and you just know the difference is going to be negative. The answer is going to be negative, huh? 4, put a 3, put a 1. What's that, 8? Yeah, and the 18... So minus 18, you can use a calculator, of course, too. So minus 18, that makes sense, doesn't it? You're, you're down 18, you're, you're in a negative answer zone. Is that good? Questions on that? All right. Okay, so negative 1.9 plus 3.3. So it's a loss and a gain. See what you can do with that one. Okay, so really that's just, you can use calculator and just subtract, huh? It's really just 3.3 subtract 1.9, isn't it? Right, it's got to take away the 1.9. I'll, I'll show it vertically, but you can use the calculator. You're just taking away 1.9. So we've got to borrow 3, put a 2, put a 1. Remember all that kind of stuff? This is 1.4. Positive, regular, 1.4. It's like that, easy. All right. Yeah, so with this one, yeah, so 3 plus negative 6 plus 16. Yeah, so how do we do that? Yeah, well, you can, there's a couple ways, it doesn't matter. It might be easy. You can go left to right if you want, that's fine. I think it's easier to actually just add the two positive ones first. So, because any order, you can do these in any order, it's all fine. Any order you want to do, left to right, right to left. I think it's easiest to do the two positive ones, 3 and 16. 19. I'll just put those two together first. And then it's just subtraction, huh? 19 minus 6. 13. And we're done. Is that good? Questions on that one? Question? Yeah. Should we talk about that last one? Sure. Yes. yes. If you eliminate the, uh, the parentheses in there, right. then it will work the same way? Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, so if you wanted to um, like just do these two first, you mean? Or just, just like eliminate the parentheses, like 3 plus negative 6 plus 16 yeah. like that? Uh -huh. That's okay. Yeah, you don't have to, and that, but that's fine to do that. Either way is good. It works the same way. It works the same way. Okay. Yeah, either way is good. Yeah, good. All right, I'll try this one. So negative 9 plus 4 plus negative 7. You can do it any way you want. You can get rid of the parentheses or leave them. I would do the two. The, I think the easiest thing is put those two negatives together first. You know, the same signs together, but you don't have to. You can just go left to right if you want. But I think it'd be nice to just do those two together first, get that answer, and then the plus 4. Might be the easiest way to go. So negative 9 and negative 7. If you have a, yeah, negative 16 because it's a loss and a loss, right? If you lose $9 and you lose $7, you lost $16. And then, and you don't need the parentheses anymore, like, like you were saying, that's totally right. And then they bring down the plus 4. And now you have a $16 loss and a 4 gain, right? So if you lose $16 and you gain back 4, 
Where are you at overall? You're down 12, aren't you? Make sense? There we go. So it's usually the, usually the easiest order is to do all the negatives together separately and all the positives together separately and then put them together in the end. Okay, so what are we going to do here? Negative 11 plus negative 16 plus negative 20. So what are we going to do? Just an adding, subtracting. You can just add them all, huh? Because they're all just negative, aren't they? They're all just losses. $11 loss, $16 loss. $28 loss. Loss and a loss and a loss. So just a big old loss, huh? So I'll just add them up. 11, 16, 28, what's that for? 15, 34, 55? And it's negative, huh? Because it's a big old $55 loss. Loss and a loss and a loss. A whole bunch of loss. Good on that. Just making sure you're comfortable. Look here. Okay, so we got bracket minus seven plus minus two plus seven plus minus five. Okay, so you're supposed to uh, do this part separate and that part separate, right? Go ahead and do that. Get the answers and then put them together. It's a negative seven there. Okay, so this part, it's a $7 loss and a $2 loss. So what does that make? A $9 loss. A $9 loss. Good. And then the other one is a $7 gain and a $5 loss. So it's a $2 gain. I can kind of drop all those parentheses and brackets. Good so far? Coming down, coming down. And now we have a 9 loss and a... Two gain. What's the result? Negative seven, huh? So loss of seven. That makes sense. If you lose nine and gain back two, you're down seven. So that's our final answer. So just do the, the bracket part separate first, and then finish it off. That's what paren parentheses and brackets are the same thing. They just look different. They're the same function. They just separate things into groups, don't they? Parentheses and brackets. Do that. Just, they're just grouping symbols, really. Good. All right. All right. So minus one-fourth plus negative nine-fourths. Okay. So um, how do we combine fractions? Do you remember? What do we do? Oh, that's, yeah, we do the crisscross when we're multiplying or dividing. Yeah, well, you're multiplying, we're multiplying. Yeah. So we'll get to that. But for adding, subtracting, for when you add or subtract fractions, you must have, not musk, but must, <laughs> you must have common denominator. Remember how you keep the denominator the same? See how these, these match and, and they must and that's good. So just leave that. Not going to mess with the bottom at all. Just keep the common denominator. Remember that? And then the only thing we do anything with is the tops. So forget about the fours on the bottom. Just leave them as they are. And then the minus one and the, mi and the minus nine. So a one loss and a nine loss They'll do their thing. What's, what's a $1 loss and a $9 loss put together? $10 loss. And then we've got to reduce that fraction. But so far, so good? So I'm making sense to this. So I just left the bottom alone. 
Just common denominator, leave it for. But the tops, a one dollar loss and a nine dollar loss makes a ten dollar loss. Now I can't leave this as the final answer. I'm almost there, but I have to reduce it. Whenever the top and the bottom, like you could divide something into it, you need to do that, huh? What goes into both four and ten? Two dots, huh? So divide by two, divide by two, be minus five has and we're done. It's okay to leave it that way, but the top, sometimes students ask a good question. They'll say, well, can we leave it with the top bigger? Do we have to make it a mixed number? You don't have to make it a mixed number. That's totally fine to have the top bigger as long as there's nothing else you, to divide out. And there isn't. Five and two have nothing in common, huh? So we're good to there. That's our final answer. Question, and, and that minus, let me ask this. That minus can be in the front, or the minus can be in the top, or the minus can be in the bottom. Are you aware that it's all the same? Erase that mark. It's all the same. It doesn't matter where the minus is on a fraction. That'll come up again and again throughout the course. So let me say it again a little more slowly. So uh, minus signs, front, top, bottom, it's all the same. Doesn't matter in a fraction. As long as you have one minus sign, doesn't matter where it's at in a fraction. So we'll see that, especially on the multiple choice test we take on Thursday. You know, they might have the minus in a different position. You'll be wondering, uh-oh, do I grab that one or does it matter? So you want to know, doesn't matter, right, where the minus is. As long as there's one minus, front, top, bottom, it's all set. On a fraction. Good? All is well? All right. So minus 8. And 13 sub means put a plus sign in between. So the sum. So the adding up. Okay. So that's in a loss of 8 and a gain of 13. What's the result of having a loss of 8 and a gain of 13? A positive or regular 5. Huh? That's our answer. Is that good? Good. Hey, that thing I just said with the fraction, I just realized I don't, I, want, I don't want to give you rules without reasons. Let me go back to that fraction thing. Remember how I said a minus, front, top, bottom's all the same? I want to make sure that makes sense for you. Think about real life. What if, um, what if somebody gave me a fraction and they said, okay, 10 over 2. Now, what is 10 divided by 2? You know the answer is 5, right? Now, let me prove to you that it doesn't matter where the minus sign is. What if they put the minus on the top? Or what if they put the minus on the bottom? Or what if they put the minus in the front? That's the front middle, you know? I want to show you that those are all... I, I claimed it a second ago. I said it doesn't matter where the minus... But I think you'll remember the rules better if they make sense. That's always the best way to do math is, you know, kind of think on it till it, it make, makes sense to you, not just something you heard a math teacher say. But that it really makes sense. You'll remember it better that way on tests and stuff. So think about it with me. Let me try to make sense of that. If Remember the rules for, um, here I'm dividing, huh? This is dividing. Remember the rules for dividing two negatives? Multiply dividing. Two negatives make a positive. One negative is just negative. Remember those rules? So we're kind of changing gears for a second so I can demonstrate the rule for dividing two numbers. A fraction is dividing, right? So when you divide negative 10 divided by 2, that's what that means, right? It means negative 10 divided by 2. What is, what is the answer? It's going to be 5, but is it positive or negative 5? Negative. negative, because it's one negative sign. If there were two negatives, they were both negative, it would have been positive. Positive 5, wouldn't it? You with me? So one negative is just negative when you divide or multiply. Two, two would be positive. So my point is, my point in all of that is the answer is negative 5. Okay, what's the answer to this one? Same thing, because now it's positive divided by negative. Again, one negative, the answer is just negative. So you see how the, and then what's this one? Well, the negative is just in the front, and then 10 over 2 is 5. He's also negative 5. So I just wanted to prove to you, see how they're all really negative 5? So you see that proves, doesn't it, that it doesn't really matter where the negative is on a fraction, top, bottom, or front. They all come out to be the same answer in the end, don't they? So that's why it's true, and I hope that makes sense for you, that in a fraction, don't worry about where the minus is. Front, bot, uh, top, bottom, or front, it's all the same thing. All right. So let's keep... Okay. So uh, they want you to actually... I didn't notice this before. They want you to actually write it out first and then figure it out. 
So they say, what is the numerical expression for this phrase? So they want you to write it first. I didn't notice that. So how do we write the sum of negative 4 and 8 and 4? Sum again means what? Add them up. So there's the first thing they want. There's, there's like the answer to, to the first part. They want, so they want you to actually type that in without, without figuring it out. And then the second part, they'll have you calculate it out. What is the answer to that? Eight. Yeah, because these guys just cancel, don't they? The answer is just eight. That makes sense? So they want you to type this in as your first answer and that in as your second answer. They actually want both answers on that one. They want it written out first and then figured out afterwards. So written out and then figured out. Both. See, I know that. See what they're saying? What is the numerical expression for the phrase? Do not simplify, right? It harder, I mean, they are, I think, than it would be just to figure it out. So they're saying, all right, current temperature is 82. It's going to drop by 6 degrees. So we know what that means, right? If you're at 82 and you drop by, it's probably 82 out there already, huh? And you drop by 6 degrees. It's not going to drop by 6 degrees today. Um, that would just be subtract 6, right? That's no big deal. We know how to do that. What is that? 8 put a 7 put a 1. 76? That would be nice if it was 76. That's the new temp. But what in the world do they want me to put there? Yeah, exactly. They want you to put negative 6. Kind of weird. That's what they want. I just want you to see what they're saying. Yeah, the final answer is 76, because if you're at 82 and you drop 6, you subtract. But what do they want in the other box? They want the 82 plus a negative 6. That's the same thing as minus 6, isn't it? They're just making sure you know plus a negative 6 is the same as subtracting 6, which you know already. Good on that. Okay, so he owes 404. Let me write that down. He owes 404. He sends a check. He, he sends a check. He owes it. He sends a check for $56. So, um, and then he chart. So, when he writes them a check for $56, what's that going to do to the amount he owes? It's going to subtract because he's paying some of that off, only a little bit, right? So we subtract first off, right? You use the calculator. These are big numbers if you want. Four, put a three, put a one. That's ten. Make it nine, put a one. Is that eight, four? So now he owes 348. And the next thing he's going to, what does it say? Um, he charges another 146. So he's going to charge... $146. So what's that going to do to the amount he owes? It's going to add it, right? Yeah. 146. What's that? 14, 8, 9, 494. He now owes 494. And then, pay, oops, my screen just flipped out on me. Pays off 271. So if he owes 494. And he's going to pay off another 270. What's, that, what's the payoff going to do? Minus. Minus it, right? 271, 3, 2. Now he owes 223. And that's the final answer. That's what they want. That's what he's going to owe in the end. Good on that? She's a calculator, making sure you know when to add, when you, when you subtract. I think you already know all that before you started this class. All right. Okay, so the, the, uh, the mouse, so, so here's sea level. I draw a picture. I'm very artistic. I'm kidding. Um, my art career ended in the seventh grade with a C, and I was trying. That was the end of my art career. All right, so this mountain has a base that's 8,376 feet below sea level. So this is sea level. And um, so the base... Down here, this is 8,376 feet below the sea level. 
it rises 17,000. So that means the total height of the mountain, huh? From that base, it rises 17,269 feet from bottom to top. It rises. That means the mountain's bottom to the mountain's top, right? So the question is, what is the elevation above sea level? In other words, this top up here, how high is it above sea level? Because that's what your elevation is, right? That's what it means when they talk about your elevation. They mean how high are you above sea level, right? The water settles around the earth, right? The, the, the level of the water settles. Like when you pour water on anything, it flattens out, right? Settles. And so the height of a mountain or the height of a building or the height of anything above sea level is what your elevation is. So how far above sea level is the top of that mountain? We know it goes up. 17,269 feet, but that's not from sea level. That's from its bottom, which is below sea level, 8,376 feet below sea level. So anyway, how do we find out the tip top? What are we going to do? Just subtract. Once you look at that picture, it's obvious. You're just going to subtract, aren't you? Just going to subtract. So you're just going to take 17, 6, nope, I messed that all up. I've been moving numbers around recently. Uh, 17, 269, 8, 3, 7, 6. Going to subtract them. Somebody get that in the calculator? 8,893. And that's our answer. It's that far above sea level. The top of the mountain. Good. On that. All right. Oh, that's number 21. Good. All right. Okay, so 3 minus a minus 5. So remember the rules on adding, subtracting positive and negative numbers. What's the deal there? That's going to become a positive 5. Yeah, do you remember that? Remember that kind of stuff? The two minuses that are, I call it head to head, they're right up against each other with no number in between. They're going to become positive, aren't they? So whenever you have two minuses, let me write that out. So two minus signs um, head to head, head to head with no number in the middle, both become positive, don't they? So the two minus signs head to head right here, no number in the middle of them, they both become positive. Because two negatives multiplied become a positive. Don't they? So then in the end it's just 3 plus 5 is just 8. That was easy after we did that. Hey, why did two minuses head to head become positive? You're telling me subtracting a negative is actually adding? Is that true? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Why, why isn't it multiplication? Good question. It's parentheses. Shouldn't we multiply? There's a plus sign in between. Good. Yeah. If this plus sign, mine, this one wasn't here, and if it was right up against the wall, that would be times. That'd be 15, minus 15 in that case, right? Does everybody see that? Yeah, so that's really important observation. If something's right up against a parentheses wall, with no symbol in the middle, that means times. Otherwise, if there's a plus or a minus between them, it's not multiplication. So you see how you have this minus that's separating the number from the parentheses, so it's not right up against the wall. So it's not multiplication. Is that good on that? Yeah, so it's, uh, it's not multiplication. Well, at least I should say the 3 is not being multiplied, is it? But this is really a minus 1 being multiplied by the minus 5, isn't it? That's, what, that's another way you can say it. I'm fine with that, or you could just say two minuses make a plus, or you could say minus 1 times minus 5, that's true also. It makes plus 5, that's true, that's what's happening also. It's still, and then in the end, it adds the 3 and the 5 are, are added together, right? Because they are separated from each other. The 3 and the 5 are separated from each other by pluses and minuses. It's not up against the wall. It's not multiplication, right? So it's 8. Yeah, why do two minuses make a plus like that? 
that true? Or is that just what some math teacher said? It's just the rule of thumb. What's that? It's just the rule of thumb. It's just the rule? <laughs> Where do math rules come from? Well, I already told you, right? All math is made up. <laughs> this is made up. <laughs> right? Is that a question on the test? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a question to understand how math fits in the real world. Yeah, math is made up, but it's made up to describe what's true. So even though it's made up, yes, it's made up to describe what's true. Let me, let me, let me show you something. I, don't, I, don't, I think it's boring. I think math, if math is just a bunch of rules to be memorized, mm-hmm. how boring. And maybe you're thinking, we know, Mr. Heron, it's boring. Well, let me encourage you. If you see the logic that's flowing from those rules, it's much more interesting and it's easier. So let me show you what I mean. Think about what, of the minus thing. What if, what if I take 10 minus like 3? Okay? Suppose I, I don't know what the double minus thing means. Let me show you how you could discover based on truth, not just some math teacher or math book saying so. 10 minus 3. Answer is? 7. seven. We all know that one, right? Now, 10 minus 2. Answer. 8. 10 minus 1. Answer. 9. 10 minus 0. See, see my pattern, right? 10, right? So far, so good, right? Math is just patterns. That's all it is. Math is the logic of patterns. Okay. What comes next in the pattern? 10. Minus one. 10 now, notice the pattern, right? 10 minus. And here, if it helps, I'll put parentheses. You don't have to have parentheses, but if that helps you focus. 10 minus 3. 10 minus 2. 10 minus 1. 10 minus 0. 10 minus... Minus one. minus one. Isn't that what's next in the pattern? Yes. Right? I'm just following the pattern. I'm not doing deep, deep magic thinking here. I'm just three, two, one, zero, negative one. Next would come minus two and, you know, on you go, right? Okay, now. Now, before you go, yeah, there it is, Mr. Terrence. Two negatives make a positive. Well, hold on. Pretend I don't even know that rule. Pretend I'm like, I don't know. This is weird. What do two minuses even do? I don't care what the math teachers say and the math books say. I want logic. I just want to follow the logical pattern. That's all math is. Math is training you. You think, why do I do this? It's training your brain to think more and more logically in following patterns, which is a very valuable skill in the real world. Because what do doctors do? They look at symptoms, and they look for the pattern in the symptoms, and they say, this is what you've got. What do lawyers do? They look at, pick at two big professions, doctor, lawyer. They look at patterns in the law, and they argue based on the pattern. Based on precedent, in this case, boom. Right? The pattern thinking, logical following a pattern, is a very valuable type of thinking. Math directly goes after that and trains that area. So follow the pattern. Well, and you think, well, yeah, but you got to, no, no, I just mean, right, I just, three, two, one, zero, negative one, negative two. Just nothing deep there, just follow the pattern. Follow it now. Suppose I don't even know what the answer is. I'm not going to do any rules here. I just want to follow the pattern. Look at the pattern and the answers. Just follow the pattern. Seven, eight, nine, ten. What's this got to be? I don't care about the rule, but what's it got to be? What's next in the pattern? It's got to be 11, doesn't it? I'm just following the pattern. So what happened with that 10 minus a minus 1? It must have added. That's why. It's logical. It's true. It's not just what some math teacher says or some math book. Math is ruled. You know who's on the throne of math? Truth. Truth. Which I greatly enjoy. Who's on the throne of the English language or any other language? Whatever people say. And that's why the rules change over time, right? Because remember, ain't wasn't a word for a long time, and then people said ain't enough. And then remember, used, back in my day, they used to always say ain't ain't a word because ain't ain't in the dictionary. It's kind of a funny little goofy saying. Well, it is now because people ta- said it enough, right? Language just kind of shapes and morphs as people talk. There's no set in stone rules, right? What I enjoy about math is it is set in stone, and that stone is truth. It is what is true. It always follows and only follows what is true. So as you follow the truth, you'll be good. So yeah, so that's why it's true that two minuses actually do add. It's looking at the pattern. It's got to be, doesn't it? What's the next one? Follow the pattern. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, got to be 12. So what did that 10 minus or minus 2 do? They added, huh? So that's why it's true. It's the pattern. It's the truth. All right, so truth is on the throne of math. Okay, give that one a try. Minus 14 minus. Is that multiplication? No. Is that times? How do we know it's not times? 
Because they're separated, right? There's something separating the 14. I mean, you could say it's minus 1 times. That's okay. That's true. That minus 1 is right up against the parentheses. So, yeah, he's multiplying. But my point is the minus 14 is not multiplying, is it? Because the minus 14 is separated from the parentheses by a negative symbol. He's not up against the wall. Only things up against the parentheses wall are multiplying. Right? We good with that? So what are we going to do? What's that minus? So you do the multiplying first, right? We always do multiplying first before adding subtracting. So the minus 1 times the minus 6, two minuses, we know, make plus. You can drop the parentheses. Why? Because something from the outside, the walls came down, the flood water went in, right? The dam walls came down, the water went in. So then in the end, it's regular 2, isn't it? 16, 16. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I am totally confused. I was testing you. Well done. <laughs> Minus 14. Yeah, 1 times 6 is 6, not 16. Thank you. Negative 14 plus 6? Negative 8, yes. That's the, that's the only mistake I'll make all semester. Or, or maybe all day. All right, so negative 8. We good there? Is that making sense? So two negatives make a positive when they're multiplied, when they're multiplied. If you don't mind, I'm going to go fast over this chapter. I will slow down. I go fast now on the stuff that's easy so I can have time to slow down later when we have the X's and things are harder with word problems and X's everywhere. That's my strategy. Buy time now for later. All right, so uh, give that a try. What should you do first on that one? Yeah, do the parentheses first. Yeah, I won't normally cover four sections in a day, but things are starting easy. So do those parentheses first. 7 minus 8. Need 1. Good to there so far. And now, is the 4 and the 1 going to multiply? No, that 4 is not multiplying because he's not up against the wall. But there is another minus 1 right there if you want, or just two minuses, whatever way you prefer to think about it, it's fine. Two minuses up against each other, or minus 1 times minus 1 if you want. They will multiply first two negatives, make a positive. You can drop the parentheses because something from the outside went in. Right? That's when the, when the floodgate, the walls come down, the water goes in. So, and then it's just 5. Good. Questions I can answer on that? Why, why did you add uh, one right before the parentheses? That's oh, yeah. You don't have to. That's one way that some people do it. Other, some people like to just say, whoops, I'm erasing. Two minuses make a plus. That's great. Just like to prefer that. Good there. Either way. You can think of it either way. Either way is true. Okay. Okay, minus 7 minus 4 minus 5 minus 3. So try that one. So do those parentheses first, as you well know. Minus 7, minus 4. What are those going to do? Minus 11. Yeah, is everybody okay with that being minus 11? Because it's a $7 loss, a 7 loss, and a 4 loss, right? On that. And then keep the minus in the middle, and 5 minus 3 is 2. Good to there. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have an 11 loss... And then a 2 loss, you, right? Because this is still minus 2, so it's still a 2 loss, isn't it? So if you lose 11 bucks and you lose 2 bucks, where's your bank account? 
You're down 13 bucks. Good? All those pluses and minuses and all that? All is well? Questions I can answer on that one? Yeah? I kind of had like a little bit of a brain fart because when I see like negative 7 and negative 4 in parentheses like that, yeah. I don't want to multiply them. You would only multiply them if one of them would be in a parenthesis. Right? Yeah, if it had its own. Yeah, like if it was minus 7, minus 4, like that, you would totally multiply them. Yeah, good question. Everybody see that difference? See, in this case, the, my, the, the parentheses would, are right up against each other. So that's the whole key. If something is right up against the wall of a parenthesis, that's when it means multiply. Whereas here, see, uh, this minus 7 is not right up against the wall of any parenthesis. He's just minus 7 and minus 4 in the middle of a parenthesis there. Good. And um, so in that case, the two minuses become positive. This would be positive 28, wouldn't it? Yeah, right? When it, if it was multiplying like that, yeah. That would be a different scenario. Yeah, good. All right. I knew something more challenging was coming. All right. So minus 3, minus, and we have that in the parenthesis, 6 minus 3, minus, minus 6 minus 6. There, okay. So try that one. Let me give you a little bit of time. So do what's in those parentheses first, right? So 6 minus 3. And let's do the other parentheses here. You don't need the parentheses anymore. Um, minus 6 minus. Whoops, I'm erasing it. Minus 6 minus 6. Yeah, am I going too quick? So everybody see what happened? If, if, it, if you want to keep the parentheses, you can. It doesn't matter. I'll put them back on. You, you can remove them. Either way is fine. But does everybody see what happened there? The minus in the middle stays in the middle. And the minus 6, minus 6, right? This is a 6 loss and a 6 loss, which leads to a 12 loss. Right? A loss of 6 and a loss of 6. It's a loss. If you lose 6 bucks and lose 6 more bucks, you lost 12. And now, everybody good so far? And this minus in the middle came on down. Now what's next? This minus and yeah, and this minus and this minus, what do they do? Their minuses up against each other? Positive. They're gonna become positive, aren't they? Two minus, remember, two minuses head to head, which means no number in the middle. Right up against each other, but no number in the middle. They meet, boom, what do they do? Both become plus. Because two minuses multiplied like that become plus. So the minus three stays out here, and this is three minus a minus is plus. Twelve, and you can leave the parentheses or get rid of them, whatever, it doesn't matter. But it's plus twelve now. And so then that's fifteen. Everybody good with that? Three plus twelve, fifteen. Now it's everybody good to there? Am I racing ahead too quick? That good? And now it's a minus three, it's a three loss. A loss of three. And a loss of 15 is a loss of 18. There's our answer. So if you lose 3 and you lose 3, you lost 15. Good. All well on that. So just work them out piece by piece. Parentheses first. All right.
So without without the uh, the minus sign right in, right in between the uh, brackets. Yeah. That will be a multiplication then, right? Yeah. If you mean if like if say this was missing. Uh, minus three minus the fifteen and then the brackets. Yeah. Right, so if this was missing, yes. if the minus 3 was right up against the wall, that would be times, it would be negative 45. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so that's the deal. Whenever a number's right up against a wall, parenthesis, bracket, whatever, same thing, that would mean times, but if there's another symbol in the middle, it's not times. Exactly right. That's the key idea. Is everybody good with that? When the number's right up against the wall, it means times. If there's any symbol in between, it's not times. Okay, so 2 fifteenths minus, minus 8 fifteenths. All right, try that one. So is that multiplication? No. Yeah. No, because it's not right up against the wall, right? If that, if this, um, if that was missing, that would be tough. And that will be important, especially when we get to our first exam, which is in three days, Thursday, because they're all going to be mixed up. You're going to have the, you know, what, what's tricky about math, what's hard about math, is that you can do the homework, and like you're doing the same thing ten times in a row, right? And so you, you get good at it. But then on the exam... It's all mixed up, all the different days of homework, and then you're doing an adding one, and then a multiplying one, and then back to adding. And, and, and so that's why I give you those practice exams, to help you with the mix-up, to make sure you can do all the rules at the same time. That's the real trick. It's nice in the summer, though. My pass rates are always higher in the summer. I love teaching summer. My summer pass rates are always great. Well, really, I think it's because better students take summer classes. The flakes don't want to come summer, because it's a lot of four hours. Are you kidding me? They don't want to sit here for four hours. So I love summer. My pass rates skyrocket. And I usually have 60% pass rate in the fall or spring, 80% in the summer usually. That's typical. It's great. I love summer. Anyway, but it's also nice. Not only are the students better, I think, in the summer, but that um, it, it, you don't have enough time to forget anything. You know, it's like our test will be Thursday. So you'll see all the plus and minus and multiplying rules and boom. Then you'll be tested on Thursday. It's fresh in your mind. You will have done it for 12 hours by the time we get to Thursday. Three, four-hour days we will have covered. Anyway, but so let me say it now, though. They will be on the test like that. If that was right up against that parenthesis with no symbol, that would be times, wouldn't it? I'd be multiplying those numbers. But because there's another symbol in there, another symbol, I'm not multiplying. It's adding, subtracting. Okay, so what do you do then? What are those two minuses head-to-head, -head, no symbol in the middle, no number in the middle of them? What do they do? Become positive. You add them. Now, how do you add fractions? What do you do on the bottom? Let's do the bottom first. Just keep it. You don't add 15 and 15 to get 30, do you? Right? And you add the tops. 2 and 8. 10. And we can't leave it that way. Remember, all fractions that can be reduced must be reduced. Yeah. What goes into 10 and into 15? 5. Be 2 thirds and we're done two thirds hey why when we add fractions don't we add the bottoms why do we only add the tops yeah so Matthew you've got it no that's you know that's not the answer I want to hear yes why is it because it, those are slices of the pie yeah real life think about a pie exactly what if I said I was so hungry last night I ate eight fifteenths of the pie that'd be half the pie Right? And then later the next morning, I had two fifteenths of the pie. Right? Yeah, so think about a real life pie. Right? Let's, let's be real with this. You've got a real life pie. I don't know if I can cut into 15 pieces very well. One, two, three, four, five, six. So seven there, and then boom, 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 boom. I think that's 15 pieces. One, two, three, four, five. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, 15 pieces of pie, okay? And so in the evening, I was hungry, and I had 
How many? Eight? Eight fifteen. So you can do the two first. I'll do the two first. So I had two fifteen to the pi. Then later I had eight. So this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight fifteen to the pi. So I had two fifteenths and eight fifteenths. So how much pi did I have? Ten thirtieths. No, you don't have the bottoms. Why not? Because a math teacher said so? Because it's not true. It's not real life. Math is made up, but it's made up to describe what's true, what really happens in real life. You have eight, ten, fifteenths, right? Ten out of fifteen pieces, huh? That's just what's true. That's all math does, is they just look at what's true, and they make numbers that reflect that truth. That's all we're doing. So you've eaten two-thirds of the pie. Right? You can see the two-thirds, can't you, by the way? Let me do one more thing. If you broke this pie into fifths, you know, five, ten, fifteen, three big sections... 5, 10, 15, you've eaten two out of the three sections. See how my dots go all the way to the 10, right? By eating two 15ths and eight 15 you ate 10 15 which is two-thirds of the pie, isn't it? Exactly two-thirds. <coughs> See how fractions are just reflecting real life? That's all they're doing. Two-thirds of the pie. All right. Just the number stuff and go to the letters. Hey, um, as we do, how are we doing on time? Good. So um, let's, um, let me, you know, I'm, I'm doing all this real life talk. Let me give you a real life question and I'm going to, um, let me pause from the X's and the numbers just to give you a real life question for a second. Just to see math in the real world, get you thinking for just a second. Okay. I want you to think, careful now, careful, don't be too quick. Don't be too quick. How much money is that? Ninety-nine cents. Ninety-nine cents. Ninety-five out of hundred. Ninety-nine. Wait, ninety-nine of a cent. So real life, like how much money? You said here's the bill. The bill is that. How much money is that? Are you thinking, you will hit me, Mr. Harris? 99 cents. It's a problem. Pro pro I assume that most of you, having done this question for many years and with hundreds of people, I probably am able to think your thoughts, and probably most of you are thinking, that's not a trick question. That's 99 cents, just under a dollar. What's the problem? Okay, so if that's in your mind, and that's what you're sure of, let me see if I can rattle you a little bit by asking this question. So that's 99 cents? Well, then what's, what's that? Well, yeah, it's 99 cents. So then decimals don't matter? Because that one doesn't have the decimal. Okay, I see what you did. So do you realize there's more here than meets the eye? If those are both the same, we got a big problem. Because you're saying decimals don't matter. Right? Those cannot be the same. Can they? No. Because decimals matter. What if I said, well, no, you can take them really. Really? Really? What if I said, all right, um, I'm, this iPad I bought, I think it was $700 or I got it. It was like a demo. one. Anyway, it was $700 and I said, oh, no, no, I, I, meant, I meant the decimal there, but you know. Or no, I meant, I meant, I meant no decimal at all. You know, decimals don't matter. Really? That's the same? Not even close. Couldn't have afforded the iPad if it was uh, <clears throat> that price, right? So, um, decimals matter hugely, right? Can we all agree with that? Yeah. Decimals are gigantic in importance. To act like take it in, take it out, it's no difference is ridiculous. So, decimals matter a lot. So, these babies cannot be the same because they have different decimals. They are not the same. We agree? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what's this one? So, what's this one? So, how much money is that? Less than a cent. Less than a cent? Right. Right. So, let me, let me ask you... What, you know, I'm going to ask, answer your questions with more questions. Let me, uh, let me ask you, how much is that? That's what you guys say for everything. That one's 99 cents too? But it's got a dollar symbol. 
Point nine nine of a dollar? Is that the same as ninety nine cents? Yeah. So are they all ninety nine cents? No. Are some of them not ninety nine cents? Yeah, they are. Are they all ninety nine cents? Yeah. Are they? No. So if you're gonna say they're all ninety nine cents, then you're saying these are the cent. Or you're saying these are the cent. If these are if these are both ninety nine cents, right? If somebody's going to say, okay, these are both ninety nine cents, I'm going to say, really? Well, they they both have the same decimal, but different symbols. So you would have to be saying to me, the symbol doesn't matter. You can put a dollar symbol or cent symbol. Ah, it's all the same. Really, really? If I say the iPad is seven hundred dollars, that's the same as if I say it's that. Those are the same. Well, I'm saying these two have the decimal in the exact same spot. The only difference between those two is the symbol. Their decimal placement is identical, right? So I could say like 700, decimal place identical. Those are the same, no way, right? But the decimal place is, and for the $99, is in the hundreds place, right? Tens, hundreds? Yeah, right. And it's the same thing for this one, tens, hundreds, right? So the decimal's in the same place on those two, and the only difference is the symbol, and that doesn't matter? Really? Because the, the top one, point nine nine is actually dollar symbol 0. 0.0099. <laughs> 0.009 with a dollar symbol? Yes. This, this is the same as this? No, the top one. Oh, the top one. The this one means this. Yes. How do you know? <laughs> All right. Um, I'd much rather you pay me the one with the dollar symbol than the one with the cent symbol. Would you, okay. Okay. Yeah, so can we take a vote? Have we decided? Have you made up your mind? Are we ready to vote? Math by democracy. <laughs> Which is not really true. Who's on the throne of math? Not, not, not the people's opinion. Thankfully, or it'd be changing all the time. Certain math rules would be in some year, out the other year. No, th truth is on the throne of math, right? It's math by truth. But what would you think is true here? So let me give you some options. Option A. Um, I don't know. What happened, what, what, I don't know. What, what, what are the options here? Um, we'll call this one A. Call this one B. Call this one C. Maybe. A, the order in which I gave them to you, A, B, and C, all three are 99 cents. Um, only A is 99 cents. And then, well, here, no, let me, I'll make that, I'm confused how to even say this. <laughs> I don't know how to write the multiple choice test here. A, only A, that'd be easier. A, only A, is, only A means 99 cents. Right, I'll just write it with English words. Only A. B means only B. C means only C is 99 cents, 99 cents. D means all three. Or maybe, maybe D would be only, boy, there's so many options. Only A and B. E would be only what? A and C. F would be only B and C. And G would be all three or 99 cents. All right, there's a lot of options. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. H I J K L N O V. Okay, so what do you think? Only A, only B, only C, only A and B, only A and C, only B and C, and finally all three. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, so how many say A? Only A is 99 cents. Only A. Alright, how many say only B? Couple. How many say only B? Nobody likes that one, huh? How many say all right, which would be B and How many say only C is 99 cents? Nobody likes that one either. All right, how many people say only A and B are 99 cents? No, nobody likes that one. Only A and C are 99 cents. Couple, with four, three or four for that one. Uh, F, only B and C. Right, it's about the same as the, well, a few more, maybe just like six A or five A or something like that. G, all three are 99 cents. Only a couple there. Or you, you guys are not. So the most popular one was F. Only B, only this and this are 99 cents. So then, if you're saying that, that was the most popular vote, if we can do math by democracy here, then what is A? If you're saying A is not 99 cents, because only B and C are, you're saying, at least, it wasn't a majority of you, but it was like our presidential elections, right? Just more than the other camp, not, not more than half, though. So, um, so, what is option A? 
than if it's not 99 cents. 99 hundredths of a cent. 99 hundredths of a cent? Yeah. Which is how much? It's less than one cent. Less than one cent? Yeah. Because it's, it's, so it's less than one cent. Yeah. What do you guys think about that option? He's saying option A is less than one cent. Is that true? Does it? How about, um, let me erase these options. I, I also think it makes good sense. And let me, let me if, if you're not 100% sure about that, let me try to make it make more sense for you. If I was to, if I was to say, um, I went to the store and bought some fish, some salmon. I bought 0.99 pounds. How much is that? Well, it's just under a pound, right? So let me just write, just under one, right? 0.99 pounds of salmon is just under one. Well, I said, okay, I bought 0.99 ounces of something. How much is that? Well, it's just under, I can't write under, under one ounce. This was just under one pound. I said, okay, okay, the uh, high jumper in the Olympic competition jumped 0.99 yards. I can think of further than that, huh? But anyway, whatever. 0.99 0.99 yards. How, how far is that? Well, just... We know 0.99 is just under one, huh? Just under one yard. Right? The, um, whatever the... I bought, found a long eraser for racing. It was so... It was, it was 0.99 feet. Well, how long is that? Well, just under one foot. So you get the idea, right? 0.99 anything is just under one of those things. Right? That's what 0.99 means, right? So 0.99 feet is just under one foot. 0.99 yards is just under one yard. 0.99 pounds is just under one pound. So 0.99 cents, same logic. What does 0.99 anything mean? It's just under one of those things. What things? Cents. So you're right. This means... Just under one cent. It doesn't mean 99 cents. B and C mean 99 cents. You guys are totally right. F is the right option. B and C are the only ones that mean 99 cents, right? Because B says 99 straight cents. So that's clearly 99 cents. And D says just under one, because that's point ninety-nine again. But it's just under one dollar, which is 99 cents. Another way of saying 99 cents. But you can't do A. Because that means just under one cent, doesn't it? Now, I say this because this is very much real world. Um, I see it around town all the time. People that are confused between decimals and cent symbols. And they think you can put them together, and that's okay. That's not okay. Technically, it's false advertising, right? Yeah, I mean, I know they don't mean to do that, but you either use the cent symbol or you use the decimal. You don't do them both or you're confused, right? Burger King, back in the day, I mean, you know, I'm old, so 80s, uh, early 90s, yeah, no, 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 90s, I was 90s, I was not, that's right, I'm not that old. Graduated in 93, so, um, so this is late 90s, my wife, my wife and I used to always drive up Highway 99 to visit my mom up there in Sacramento, where I was originally from. So we'd be driving on Highway 99. You know Elk Grove? You go by Elk Grove? There was always this huge, gigantic billboard. Highway 99, Elk Grove, going northbound. Burger King had the, the Whopper. Whoops. Had the Whopper. Remember the Whopper? For the longest time, the gigantic said, sign said, Whopper. Point ninety nine cents. They had that sign up there. I mean, they had it up for years. I would always drive by that sign. And I'd always look at that and go, oh, I can't believe it. And, and I would always say, honey, we should just pull off the road. Right here at this, you know, I was always kept on going north to Sacramento. But I said, so we should just pull off. Go in there to Burger King say, I'll take a Whopper. Here's a penny. Keep the change. You know? <laughs> and, and, they, and they, of course, would go, you weirdo, get out of here. They would just throw me out of the restaurant, I'm sure. But I always wanted to do that. And what, what I thought was funny was not that they made a mistake. I know. We all, I, you've seen me make a mistake today. We all make mistakes. But what was funny to me is that this was up for years. right? What if they had spelled, the, what if they had said, 
a Burger King. What if what if that what if they had misspelled the words Burger King King like that? Would that be up for years? No, no, no. That would be up maybe for the weekend, and it would be on the five o'clock news. And the owner of the company would be calling and say, "What idiot just put that up? Get your little tail out there and fix that." And then afterwards, you're fired, right? I mean, that would be what would happen with the, with a spelling mistake, but with a math mistake. What, what's our culture say? I just think, I think cultures are very interesting. Our culture, what does our culture say? Well, who can do math anyway, right? I mean, it's just, I mean, right? And that's kind of the feel, right? And yet, that's a, that's, a, that's a basic math mistake. That's a basic misunderstanding of decimals is what that is. And it's every, I saw it right here. Um, there used to be, right before that Taco Bell came in on the corner of Blackstone and McKinley there, there used to be a little burger place and I remember going through there one time. I saw the drive through and it said the milkshakes were 0.99 cents. You'll see it all the time as you look around. And it's epidemic of our society. It, well, it indicates an epidemic in our society. And that is a dearth, a lack of math knowledge. Right? It's just common. I wonder if this would happen in China or Japan or, you know, where math is not considered something that that everybody shouldn't know, right? Do you think you could get away with paying a penny for it? I, I don't think so. <laughs> Legally, you'd have to go to court or something. Uh, yeah, that might cost you more than the penny. I, don't, <laughs> I never wanted to push it. It just made me laugh. I just think, I just think culture's in... I mainly just like culture, and I just think it's funny that math has become such a thing now where you can just do it wrong publicly for years... And nobody says anything. I mean, what does that say about our culture and how we think and do mathematics? All those stats are true, right? That they always say about America and how we're going down, 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 down in the math and science thing. This is indicative of, of that. So anyway, funny thing, ask your friends and family about 0.99 cents this afternoon. Do it like I did. The funny part is you just, just start by asking them. How much is 0.99 cents? And they'll just flash up, 99 cents. Just boom, you know, they don't even give it a thought. And then say, really? Well, then take out the decimal and say, well, then how much is that? Then the confusion starts to set in. Well, that's 99 cents. So then decimals, and then follow with the question, so then decimals don't matter? Because that's what they're saying if they're saying they're the same. I think if enough people would have noticed the thing would have changed. I guess so. It's funny to me that... Right, on the register, yeah. right. But on the, I mean, this is a giant billboard. This wasn't just a tiny little thing for years. I had a colleague at Stanislaus State, the other college I taught at. She, she had a picture of it. She took a snapshot and had it on her uh, office door. She thought it was funny, too. Anyway, yeah. All right, we're putting it all together thing, which is what tests do. All right, so um, minus 6x squared minus 2x squared. Give that a try. So just do the numbers in the front. Pretend the x squareds aren't even there. Just do the minus 6, minus 2. And then when you're done, throw the x squared back on there. Because you're not going to mess with the x's at all. Okay, so what is minus 6 and minus 2? Are these multiplied? No, nothing's multiplied. There's no parentheses here. Nothing's multiplied. It's all add subtracting. What do minus 6 and minus 2 do? Yeah, it's a six. It's a loss of six dollars or yards or whatever, and a loss of two. So that's a loss of eight, right? To lose six dollars and lose dollars, you lost eight. And then you just throw the x squared on. Don't 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 make it x to the fourth. That would be if they were times. They're multiplied. Good, easy enough. So just do the numbers in the front, like terms. Okay, so minus 58 minus 3m plus 6n minus 47 minus n minus 7m. Okay. So go ahead. So what you should combine all the like terms, right? You know what I mean? So like the number with the number. You use your calculator. Just take out minus 58, minus 47, you know, or do it by hand, whichever way you prefer. So then do the M with the M and the N with the N. It doesn't matter what order. 
Just put these guys together and those guys together, and these guys together. Just numbers with numbers, M's with M's, N's with N's. Remember to use the sign in the front of them, right? Whatever plus or minus is in the front of the number, that's their baby. That's their sign, right? So don't the numbers make uh, 105? Yeah. Minus 105 like that. And do the M's with the M's now. Minus 10M. So it was, yeah, it is. It's minus 10M. Are you good with that? Because a minus 3 and a minus 7, a loss of 3. And a loss of 7 is a loss of 10. So far, so good. And now the ends. What, what is in front? That second, you got a 6N. N is a Nancy, and then the second N, there's no number in front, so what number's really there when there's no oh, number? One. It's really a one. Yeah, you wear that. We do that all the time in math. Well, why do we do that? Well, because one times N is still just N. It's not any different. It's like an invisible one. It does, it's logically the same thing, right? We always use logic. One times N is the same as N, so it's okay. So, um, so plus six so it's a si plus 6 minus 1 is plus 5, isn't it? And that's it. And you can put that in any order. And on the multiple choice test on Thursday, if they have those mixed around, that's fine. Still grab it, same answer. Doesn't matter what order the M's and the N's and the numbers are in. So it'd be the same. It'd be the same if they put the M in the front, you know, and the minus 105 at the back. That'd be fine. Any order. Whoops. Any order on these would be totally the same. Good to there. Questions on that? All right. Keep moving there. Okay, so uh, the difference between 3 and negative 12. Let me help with this. Let me let you write it down, and then I'll show you. It, um, it, it wants me to write a numerical expression and then simplify. So it wants me to write it all out first and then get an answer. So when I write it all out, whenever I say difference, or when they say difference, when, when they say the word difference, what is, it's not sum. Sum means add. Difference means subtract. So what that means is I have to stick an extra minus sign that comes from the word difference. That's in addition to the minus that's already on the 12, huh? You with me on that? Just because they said the word difference, not sum. They said sum, I'd make a plus in the middle. They say difference, I put a minus in the middle. So what we really have then is 3 minus, so funny looking 3, 3 minus minus 12. So now what? Oh, so that's the first step. They want you to type that in. That's... That's like part A or whatever. They want you to type exactly that in. That's the first thing they want typed in. And then part B, they want you to actually figure out what that answer is. So what do we do with those two minuses in the middle? Plus. plus. Two minuses hit each other head to head, become plus. They both become plus, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's 15. Could you put a parenthesis around the negative 12? You could. If that helps you, feel free to do it. It's not required, okay. but it's totally acceptable. And a lot of people like to do it that way. And that's how the book usually shows it. Yeah, okay. you're right. Is that good on that? Does that make sense? Now, do you know if they're going to want that in the answer? Like, or do they want the parentheses? Good question. Let's go back and actually do it, and we'll see. Um, I might, it might change the numbers on me. All right. Minus 21. Subtracted. From 11. Try that one. That one could be. This one tricks people on the test a lot. Questions like this.
So um, the, the trick on this one, do you realize you have to switch the order? Because subtracted from, it's really an English language thing more than it is a math thing. The English words subtracted from means that goes in the back. So this minus 21 goes in the back. Now, well, actually, there's one other mistake. Sometimes I see people go like that. That's not right either. That'd be minus 10, and that's the wrong answer. Why not? Why is that not right? Yeah, yeah. You've got to you've got to say subtract. That comes from the word subtract, and then the minus twenty one. So really, the two negatives are going to become positive. Do you see why that is? So the extra minus comes from the word subtract. So the word subtract brings in a subtraction symbol, and then there's the minus that's on the twenty one. Been there all along. Yeah. So watch out. It's just easy to to mess up on the order or forgetting that that really means two negatives. One from the subtract. One that's already on the 21. So then that's plus 21, and so it's what, 32? 32. Positive. So like they said, it was a different to start with 21? Oh, yeah, good question. Yeah, 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 very good. I'm glad you brought that up. Difference, well, here, let me write it down here. Yeah, you're right. Difference keeps the order the same. Difference, if they use the word difference, keep the same order. But um, subtracted from, switch the order. Yeah, good, good point. Order, the difference keeps the order. Subtracted from switches the order. That's true. Yeah, um, I allow on exams a 3 by 5 card. So, on the, so you could write that on your 3 by 5 card. So you could, anything you want, front and back of a 3 by 5 card you can bring with you on the exam just for little key facts to, to keep your memory straight. So you can use that. That would be a good thing to write on a 3 by 5 card for Thursday's exam. Difference keeps you order the same. Sub subtraction from switches the order. Are we going to have the same uh, amount of time? Four, four, 20 hours? <laughs> no, 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 no. We'll... Uh, <laughs> No, we can't afford to burn all those other hours. No, we'll do new sections in the morning I'll, for like an hour, maybe two. I'll review for an hour. Then we'll take the exam for an hour. It'll be the last hour of class that day. On those uh, 3 by 5 cards, can we write like a practice, like the ones that we have problems with? Yeah, questions? write out the whole question. Write anything you want. Three, that's a good idea. Front and back? On front and back. Oh, okay, cool. Anything you want. Yeah, write out the most difficult questions. Yeah, it'll be different numbers in the real test, but it's good to have that model to look at. Yeah, exactly. Okay, try that one. Difference of 4 and negative 10 added to 7. So yeah, now they're using the difference word, so keep the order the same, right? Don't switch any orders. But the difference does stick a subtraction in there. So the difference puts that minus sign right there. Good. The difference between 4 and negative 10. The difference added to 7. Is that good so far? So it wants you to, you know, part 1, they want you to just type that in. You know, they always want the phrase in part one, they don't want you to figure out the answer at first. They just want you to write that whole thing out. That would be the first part, part A or whatever. And then part B, they want you to actually figure it out. So, okay, you know what to do, right? So these two minuses here become plus. And so then it's just a big adding problem. What is that, 21? There it is. Is that good? Is that making sense? So the difference word keeps the order the same. With it, with an extra subtraction for the word difference. 
subtracted from switches the order. Okay, so a scuba diver's depth is negative 71. His previous de depth was negative 32. That's below sea level, I guess. Write a subtraction and find the change in depth. Oh. Change in depth. So, how do we do this? Um... You're always going to take present <coughs> minus previous. It's always going to be, because that's how you figure out change, right? In fact, if you want to figure out change, you want to say, you know, um, you know, this little child has grown three inches over the last year. You would take height now, present, minus previous. Right? Whenever you have a change, you subtract the previous, don't you? That's what change means, real life. See how math is reflecting real life. Real life change is always now minus previous, isn't it? Not the other way around, right? If the child is, you know, if the child is is uh, two foot three inches now and was just two foot previous, that would be a three inch gain. You wouldn't turn that around. You wouldn't take the two foot minus the two foot three inches, right? You you always do the present minus the previous for change. So that's just real life. So what's the present? Negative 7 to 1 minus, minus 32. Got the double minus thing again, right? The minus in the middle is because that's what div, that comes from the difference. The subtraction. <coughs> so you know what to do. So that's, so that's what they want you to put this, they want you to put in that box there. And then they want the final answer. What's the final answer? Minus 71 plus 32. Is that what it is? Yeah, 39, huh? So that's the answer they want you to put in the second box. Does that make sense? You write out the problem for the first box, so it's always real life. When things change, it's always present minus previous. Present minus previous. <laughs> Good to there. All right, so how far above the floor of the basement is the roof of the office building shown in the figure? Oh, okay. So, so they just want a final answer. Okay, so how far, way up here, how far from the basement? Can you all see that okay? Yep. So um, what do we do? We got 300, the building's 349 feet above ground level, but the basement goes down 12 feet. And they're asking how far above, above the floor of the basement. You add it. It's really going to add it, isn't it? Yeah. You, you could, it's really 349 plus 12, which is, I don't know, whatever that is, 361? 361. Does everybody see that? Now, or the way you could, what they're really getting at, guys, is they're saying it's really 349 minus a minus 12. But we know that just becomes adding 12. Everybody see that? It's minus a minus 12. Like, I could make more sense of that for you, I think, if I said it this way. If I said, hey, what if, what if I stuck out my head here at 100 feet up? I stuck my head out, and I looked up, and I said, how far from the top to where I'm at? Well, I would take 349, and I would subtract 100, right? Right? You, whenever you want it, two, two spots on the building, you take the top spot minus the bottom spot, and that'll be the difference, right? Well, same thing if you're at the basement, and you're saying, how far all the way to the basement? It's top minus the bottom, which is negative 12. You see? And what do those two minuses do? Plus, we sensed right away that you add, just by our intuitive logic, we knew, oh, you got to add the 12, because you got the whole 349 plus the 12 down, you got to add them, right? That's true. And also, subtracting a negative, that's another real, real life way to see that subtracting a negative is adding, isn't it? See that? See how that works? You just sense that, don't you? Right? Some people say, I'm not logical, or 
or whatever. No, you are logical. You sense that, right? You're not a monkey, right? Monkeys don't sense that, right? Animals don't think logically. They, they don't have it. It's the distinguishing mark, one of the distinguishing marks between humans and all. You might not, people talk about animal intelligence. Well, yeah, they can do little, little tricks and stuff, but have them write a book for me or have them, uh, you know. Beavers are building the same dams they were building 2,000 years ago, right? But human beings continue to grow in their ability to do things. So you have logic. So I can just appeal to you and just say, hey, look, if it's 349 up and it's 12 down, you just go add. Nobody needs to tell you that. You just understand adding. And you're right. Uh, we get warm. I guess we're not as bad as those places back east that get sticky in south, huh? All right, suppose temperature negative 109 in Antarctica, and positive 125 in the Sahara Desert. How many degrees warmer is that? What's the difference? So I'm going to take 125 and do what? Add 109. Yeah, you know it's really going to be an adding in the end because you have logic. You just sense it, right? Because, you know, like if you have zero degrees, this one's 125 above and this one's 109 below. So the, the gap between them is you're going to really add 125 and 109. Formally, you could say it's minus, minus 109, right? Take the high temperature minus the low temperature. But you know the two minuses is going to be plus in the end, which is what we already sensed by looking at that. So in the end, you just add them. What's that? 200-something? 34. 234 degrees difference. That's a lot of difference. And we covered it. Look at that. We finished 1.7. That's it. Okay, so we will stop there. We did well. Let me, let me be clear for you.